We live in a world of malnutrition. 1.9 billion people are currently overweight or obese, with a prevalence rate that's increasing year on year. However, obesity is only one side of the story. Undernutrition remains an important public health problem. 17 million children do not get enough dietary energy or protein to eat. These two major diseases are associated with severe medical consequences. Obesity associated with non-communicable disease, such as type 2 diabetes and cancer, whereas undernutrition is associated in the major driver of childhood sickness, mortality, and in those that survive, the development of non-communicable disease, such as type 2 diabetes. These two conditions occur side by side in many low to middle income countries, not only within the community, but within the household themselves. So we need to find common ways or ways to actually treat these two diverse conditions. Recent evidence points to the gut microbiota, a diverse community harboured in the intestine that functions as an organ in its own right. Normally, this community works in synergy with us. But when things go wrong, such as in under and over nutrition, it can work against us. So the challenge is to get systems that will actually combat under and over nutrition together. So, for example, in undernutrition, one of the main problems we have is that the feeds that we give, such as the milk-based feeds, do not support the gut microbiota. They're very good at actually changing the actual nutritional status of the child, but they do not support the gut microbiota. So the children remain at risk of sepsis from the gut. Likewise, in obesity, the microbiota, again, is dysfunctional. And this has been linked to appetite regulation, dysfunction, weight gain. And it's thought to be driven through the adoption of a westernized diet. So our idea is that by supporting the gut microbial diversity, we can get a common solution to both. And we believe that this can be done in a way that's economically viable in low to middle income countries. So diets that support the diversity of the gut microbiota are also linked to good health. The actual um, most important nutrient in this is dietary carbohydrate. But for dietary carbohydrate to feed the microbiota, it needs to resist the actual effect of digestive enzymes. One commonly consumed group of foods, legumes, is particularly high in this resistant carbohydrate. They are a crop that has a good environmental impact and they can be grown on relatively poor soil. Our work in Imperial College's field stations in Kenya have shown for the first time that actually supplementing feeds of undernourished children with leg legumes improves the gut microbial diversity and reduces the risk of sepsis in these children. On the other side of the coin, obesity, where it's got a foothold in low to middle income countries, the actual amount of legumes consumed has declined. And our work has shown that if you feed resistant starch from legumes to overweight people, it suppresses appetite. But the amount that you need to do this is enormous. So we've actually gone and actually taken some scientific principles and created a cheap food ingredient that works in the same way that the microbiota as legumes do. This ingredient, when given to overweight adults, prevents weight gain. It can be added to many common foods and is currently in phase three clinical trials in the UK. Under and over nutrition remain major public health problems globally. They're complex conditions, but we believe that our work on legumes and legumes-inspired feeds actually points to common solutions to both. Thank you. Thank you.